At launch, the Polestar 2 was quick, fun to drive, solidly built, and had less range than offerings from other automakers. So it's a few dozen miles here and there. Well, for the range obsessed, that's probably enough to push somebody to another automaker. Well, Polestar wasn't finished. In fact, it had something else. It had this. This is the Polestar 2 single motor long range edition of its car. It starts at $45,900 and has an EPA estimated range of 270 miles. That should be more than enough to get you anywhere you need to be. But adding all those miles, well, there is a trade-off. Instead of an all-wheel drive vehicle, this Polestar 2 is front-wheel drive, so you lose some of the traction, especially at takeoff. There's also a power loss by going from two motors to one. The single motor vehicle has 231 horsepower instead of 408 found in the all-wheel drive version, and that translates to a 0 to 60 time that's 2.5 seconds slower at seven seconds. Acceleration is still plenty quick, especially when you're on the freeway and you need a little extra boost in order to pass somebody. Uh, that said, when you're driving this vehicle and you're going from a standstill, there is a slight delay that I didn't notice on the dual motor version of the Polestar 2. Polestar 2, of course, two motors, a bit quicker. This uh, Polestar with a single motor, not as quick, but most people actually don't need to be driving that fast. So a single motor Polestar like this one with the front wheel drive, it's plenty for most people. This version of the Polestar 2, because it is front wheel drive, you will encounter some understeer when you're really pushing it around corners. And that's true of any front wheel drive vehicle. You're going to get understeer. Understeer is what happens when you're going really fast and you turn the wheel and the car keeps going straight. That's understeer. Oversteer is when you're going really fast and you turn the wheel and the back of the car flies out. That is oversteer. You're gonna get understeer in this vehicle, you're gonna get understeer in every front wheel drive vehicle, and in this one, it's only when you're really pushing it, and most people won't be doing that. Polestar offers up three different steering modes, firm, standard, and light. I typically stick to the sportiest steering feeling. Even when cruising through parking lots, it gives the vehicle a more dynamic feeling. When it comes to braking, the brakes on this vehicle are great, but more importantly, Polestar and Volvo have the best regenerative braking one pedal driving system of any other vehicle on the market. Their system is, to me, the best. It's the easiest to master. It only takes a few stops at a few stop signs to really sort of figure it out. You just lift your foot off the accelerator and you come to a stop exactly where you want to. Again, this is only after a few tries. For example, uh, I have to stop right here. Just let it off and boom, perfect. That of course brings us to range. The feature that benefits from that single motor from those slower zero to 60 times and the robust regenerative braking system. The EPA states that this Polestar 2 will do 270 miles on a single charge, and that's outstanding, except that I got something better. On a range test where I drove the vehicle on the highway at 70 miles an hour, and on back roads, and on suburban streets, I got a range of 278 miles, which is, well, eight miles more than what the EPA is offering up. So that's a good thing. The Polestar 2 has a battery pack capacity of 78 kilowatt hours. Of that, 75 kilowatt hours is available for use. Based on our test, that means the efficiency of the Polestar 2 is 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour. Pretty good for a vehicle from Volvo's performance division. In order to replenish all those electrons, the Polestar 2 supports DC fast charging up to 150 kilowatts. Now, that's pretty good, but it is still bested by vehicles made in Korea and by Tesla. The Hyundai Ioniq 5 and the Kia EV6 both support charging up to 350 kilowatts, while the Tesla Model 3 and Model Y both support charging up to 250 kilowatts. That said, charging at home is likely how this vehicle will stay ready to go. If you completely deplete the battery, a level two station at up to 11 kilowatts will get you back to full in about eight hours. And while you're out in the world, you become accustomed to Android Automotive. Uh, both Volvo and Polestar have embraced uh, Google's infotainment system. And I threw on my account, I pl plugged in my Spotify account, as you can tell, I listen to the office ladies, and these are the apps that I have available right now. 
The biggest benefit is Maps because it is linked to my Google account. Anything that I search for on my phone will show up here. And I also have access to charging stations in the area. And of course, my usual destinations, my home and work. CarPlay was announced when this vehicle was unveiled, but we still don't have CarPlay. I have reached out to Polestar and they have assured me that CarPlay is coming to the vehicle in the future. But in the meantime, Android Auto does offer a streamlined interface with one of the best voice assistants on the market that can be used to navigate, launch media, set the temperature, and even answer random questions. The world's tallest mountains include Mount Everest at 8,848.86 meters, K at 8,611 meters, and eight others. See, we had to cut Google out of that edit so that your home devices wouldn't go crazy telling you the tallest mountains. Android Automotive also includes access to the Play Store, not the entire Google Play Store. Instead, a curated set of apps built specifically for vehicles, including a browser, which is a nice way to pass the time while charging. Most of the apps available right now are streaming based, including one for bronies. But the amount of apps available has increased since Android Automotive launched, and I expect it to get even larger as more and more automakers embrace Android Automotive. The minimalism of Android Automotive mirrors that of the vehicle's interior, like Volvo, Polestar's interior doesn't come with a lot of buttons. There's a physical button for the volume, but the climate controls are part of the infotainment system. Throw in a few buttons on the steering wheel, pretty much hit all the buttons available in this vehicle. Everything is where you expect it to be without much in the way of frills. Instead, it just feels very streamlined. The rest of the vehicle really follows the Swedish design aesthetic. It's very subdued, very minimalistic, but also very stylish. It's also very vegan. Uh, they have this vegan weave tech here on the seats. So you don't have to worry about killing cows while you're also trying to save the world driving an EV. The seats are actually quite comfortable. They're sturdy, they bolster you. And the rest of the materials in the vehicle feel very upmarket. You can add leather to this vehicle, but it does seem a bit garish. To add leather to this vehicle, it is a $4,000 option, but you just can't add leather by itself. You also have to add it as part as the plus pack, which is an additional $4,000. So in order to drape this vehicle with dead cows, it cost $8,000. So what I'm saying is you better really like leather. The front seat offers plenty of head and leg room. The back seat though, well, it offers leg room as long as the adults sitting up front aren't too tall. Plus, rear headroom could be an issue for those taller than six foot four. Back here in the trunk, you have a pretty decent sized trunk. It's 14.3 cubic feet of space. But what's nice is that you have this little divider that pops up and you can hang your bags on here. You got this little strap to keep your stuff down. And there's a little extra space under here. It's a little L-shaped. But the trunk, you can probably get about four to five carry-on suitcases back there, which is great if you're going on long road trips because you have 270 miles of range. The Polestar 2 long range single motor EV might at first glance seem like the less fun version of the Polestar 2 lineup. The reality is most people don't need all the performance offered up by the all wheel drive Polestar 2. Instead, they'll get more out of the extra 21 miles of range and the $4,000 they save. Either one you choose, you'll get a stylish EV that has one of the best infotainment systems on the market. And that's essentially because we've been using Google products in our phones and in our homes for years. That said, the Polestar 2 is a great EV that'll eventually get part play support someday.